Hi, my name is Katherine Alice Michaels, and I'm surrounded by artist books from the Cynthia Sears collection. Cynthia's collection is quickly approaching 2,000 works, but her motto to collecting is never enough. Every book in the collection is a treasure, and these two books are jewels. Today, I'm sharing Memento by Julie Chin and By a Thread by Lynn Avedenka. Both of these artist books attribute life or death power to language through the printed or spoken word. They highlight that when lives hang in the balance, a book or a story can make the difference. The more I learn about a book or artist, the more I admire the work. This is especially true with Julie Chin's Memento. Cynthia began collecting Julie's work before she collected artist books generally, and it's easy to see why. Like all of Julie's work, the content is complex and the design unique. When I first saw Memento, it was in the Sherry Grover Gallery, and if I remember right, it was displayed something like this. It was easy to see it was a locket, something precious meant to be worn close to the body. Memento began with the March 5, 2007 car bombing on Al Mutanabi Street, the street of book vendors in Baghdad, Iraq. It was a violent attack aimed not just at people, but on the printed word. Over 30 people died and more than 100 people were wounded. In 2011, poet and bookseller Bo Beausoleil and editor, book artist, and senior research fellow Sarah Bodman reached out to the artist book community and asked who would like to create a response to this incident. Over 200 book artists responded. The project is called an inventory of Al Mutanabi Street. When I saw Memento in the Sherry Grover Gallery, I read the label, which explained the weaving was from the preamble to the US and Iraqi constitutions. Then I recognized the Al Mutanabi Street photo, pre-bombing, from Bo's emails to me about this project. I immediately grasped the context for Julie's book. Memento is Julie Chin's contribution to an inventory of Al Mutanabi Street. I've been wonderfully haunted by this artist book ever since. I didn't see the rest of this piece for some time, and when I did, my awe for the book grew considerably. The locket has a backside, and from this side, you can remove a hidden book, at least it had been hidden to me. Here's what Julie says. As I was making Memento, I began by considering my own experience of reading and how ingrained my sense of entitlement to read what I pleased clouded my ability to understand what it might be like in a radically different societal situation. I pondered the idea of reading as a potentially dangerous act in which possession of a book on one's own person could become a death sentence. In such a world, how much courage would I myself have, given the chance would I continue to read whatever I chose? The texts on the outer and inner sides of these gate-folded pages reflect these considerations. But making the book alone was never enough. Julie imagined the locket, something two-sided, conceptually bomb-proof, able to be hidden on the body, as integral to the book. She added the woven constitutional element as part of the token side of the locket. This is to bring attention to the long and complicated history the U.S. has with Iraq, including war. What we are to think of this, Julie leaves to you and me to decide. One copy of Memento and one copy of all the other editions made for an inventory of Al Mutanabi Street were donated to the National Library in Baghdad. This is by a thread by Lynn Avendenka. When I saw this book online, I was captivated by the shapes and colors. 
When the actual book arrived, it did not disappoint. The book is enclosed in a humbly colored wrapper with text that introduces the theme for the work. As the book is uncovered, the colors and patterns that evoke the rich cultures of the Middle East are revealed. The book easily expands to five feet of arched doorways and geometric tiling patterns. Seeing this, I was pulled right in. This is how Lynn explains her book. By a thread is woven around the conversations of two women, Esther, the Jewish queen, and Scheherazade, the Muslim heroine of A Thousand and One Nights. The book begins with Esther as she first tells her tale and then advises Scheherazade, who then takes over the narrative. Although their stories are separated by hundreds of years, there are similarities. Both were unwilling wives of insomniac kings. There were a thousand women that came before each of these women in the tales of their lives. Esther and Scheherazade both told stories both women spoke up and saved lives when they could have remained silent. Both utilized the only power each had at the time, the power of language. The title comments on the danger each woman was in, that their lives were hanging by a thread. One of the pleasures for me in By a Thread is Lynn's reach across time through fact and fiction to unite these two extraordinary women of different faiths and cultures. I'm going to read some words from Esther. Chapter two, in which Esther realizes plans may go awry. When I imagined my life, this was not what I imagined. All I remember from the beginning is that Mordecai took care of me, was mother and father, uncle and advisor, my protector until we reversed our roles. From him, I learned to listen carefully to everyone to store all the little scraps of truths, lies, jokes, and cruelties until I needed them. When we separated and I moved ahead on my own, I was well prepared. And this is from Scheherazade. Before me, there was a line of a thousand women, and there is a waiting line of women that circles the palace seven times. One thousand women before me were killed in the king's crazed attempt at revenge, and even now, the women wait to see if I will succeed or fail, knowing that their lives depend on my storytelling skills. The book is designed to allow each woman's voice to circle around as if speaking to each other and reinforcing the never-ending nature and need of story. By a Thread is committed to the power of story and Memento to the power of the printed word. Both books speak to the values of liberty and the dangers that threaten it. Thank you for letting me share these gems with you today. I look forward to sharing more artist books with you in the weeks and months to come.